Gold streets, pearly gates, everything. Life, no death, no son. Jesus Christ himself is the son. Amen. No more sickness, no more pain. You talking about hell? I mean, crazy folks talk that kind of, you got to be nuts. How many of y'all ever heard that? Raise your hand. Nobody? Now y'all, come on. I ain't, just, I ain't just got saved. Y'all ain't never heard nobody say, I want to go over the hill because that's what the party going to be. My friend going to be there. If that's your friend, but, and they say, you see, now you're a big fool if, if you let your friend drag you in hell. <laughs> My anointing, your anointing should be so precious to you that you would don't even want to get in an argument. Because the devil come to destroy that what you have. The thief come with the rock, kill, and do what? To destroy it. One thing that the, uh, one thing that the thief come is to destroy the church. He fears the church. You know why? The church is the place where God people come together and pray. Satan, we're going to tear your kingdom down. Satan, we're going to preach your kingdom down. Satan, we're going to pray your kingdom down. We're going to sing and rejoice your kingdom. Satan! He's going to do it. That is scared of us. And when we, when we mention the blood of Jesus Christ, I'm going to just tell you how the blood works because I mean, I've tried it for years. In the beginning, it does not work like this. You've got to let the devil know God has authorized me. <laughs> Don't you know you're authorized? He gives you the authority to, to confront any devil. All devils, you can confront that devil. You, not talking about the preacher, but we're talking about a lay person can, can confront them, I mean, uh, face that devil and say, devil, I'm not going to budge. Sisters come upon you, it may take a little time, but keep on stirring the blood of Jesus. I guarantee you, if you keep on sinning, y'all see it. Look like you see, God, 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 I think, take your faith and get your faith and get you to believe him. Everything that God has in store for you, don't come overnight. Things gradually come to you. And, and another thing before I get ready to preach, something that God has taught me, say when the test and trial come, rejoice. Rejoice that I'm going through. Things are hard. Look like I can't look like I don't see no way. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. That's what the Bible says. Because when you rejoice, see, rejoice that God allowed the devil to test you. You've been begging for something, asking God for something, you haven't got it. So God said, if you really want it, then I'm going to have the devil to test you. The same way he tests Job. I'm going to have the devil to test you. And if, and if you can complete the test, that I allow the devil, he can't go no further than God allows him to go. Amen. And when the test starts to get greater, it looks like everything, the kitchen sink is coming at you, everything is coming at you. Rejoice even more. They say, Lord, you know what, devil, you know what? I'm getting closer to my blood. I've been getting closer to that, which I've been asking God to do. I'm getting, clo I'm getting closer to it. Because the closer you get, the devil has done to send out reinforcement. Devils you, you unite themselves together. Demons unite themselves together. Why do you think the, the man legend had a legion that had so many de devils in it? They was united in one body. Sometimes the church can't even come, come together because you don't have this, you don't have that, and that. Listen, listen, listen. we are not here for competition. Not me. I'm not here for competition. I'm here for one purpose. That is to serve Amen. our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I can please him. I'm not trying to please you. If I can please them, folks, God only say, you've got to hold that name, apostle. You've got to hold that name, bishop. I said, I'm bringing bring myself down. Humble myself under the mighty hands of God. Amen. In due time, in due season, ye shall reap if you faint not. Amen. It looks wrong. We got 
pride and privilege. Man, I love my badge too and all, all that stuff to go with it. Love it, man. Flick it out in a minute. Yeah. Don't start no mess. But you know what? I can love God. I can love the test. Just as well as I, I can love up that badge. Oh, praise the Lord. And I find that one thing and it's coming to pass and we will let you know sometime. Hope that doesn't come quick enough because it's going to blow your mind. Amen. I've been asking God for it for years and all of a sudden 50 years later, sometimes you want yours right now. So you're like you're going to dictate to God, I want it right now, God. I can't wait no longer. Uh -huh. Who are you to stand up and tell God, I want it now. Sometimes your blessing will take you years to get it. Amen. But one thing I do, do know, sometimes you've been uh, 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 denied of your blessing because you've been failing the test. <laughs> so what God do, he, re, he calls you to go and repeat the same thing over and over again. He makes you somebody. He makes you out of man. Because when, when you do that, when you get victory over the devil, it improves God's relationship with you. Somebody praise God. I said something before. God said that you can trust me. Yeah, I'm repeating myself. He said, you say that you trust me. Then he told me that can I trust you? Think about that. How many of y'all say that, that you can trust me, God? How many of y'all said that I have a whole lot of time? Y'all like like your hand and it won't go up. <laughs> I'm gonna bring it up in a minute. <laughs> yeah. And I said, God, I mean, it, it, it was so shocking when when he said, You trust me, but can I trust you? Some of you have gotten healed, but can I trust you to testify to it? Mm -hmm. Oh, the Lord knows me, and the Lord knows. It's not just given for you and the Lord. It's given to give you to spread the gospel. Amen. People overcome through what God has taken you through, and some people are going through the exact same thing you went through to get to where you at. I'm a step. I ain't got no business even preaching. God took seven or eight percent of my stamina away. way. Well, they just mock me and say, You ain't gonna never be nothing. Make that out of life. You can be exactly what God has called you to be. Amen. Anybody in here have, have a calling upon your life. Amen. May not be behind the pulpit. Doesn't mean forget about the pulpit. Everybody want a pulpit because you make money. <laughs> y'all, y'all know about me and money, right? Yeah. If money gonna cause me to go to hell, you have all the money you got. <laughs> Because I know the Lord will make a way somehow. And he will deliver when you need it. And my God says supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. God is no way being broke now. The earth is the Lord. Gold and silver, cattle, front and fire is the Lord. And the earth is the Lord. Everything that the people own right now, it belongs to God. You are just using it. Rich man is just using it. Trump is just using it. I wouldn't be surprised if you lose every penny you got. Amen. All right. So God they bring back the backslider. Amen. Let them sit. Let them sit. And you let me handle that. Y'all got a situation and God is saying, shut your mouth and let me handle that. The reason why God can't handle it because you keep interfering. God wants to handle it and here you you step in front of God. And you know what, what, what God does? He steps back and lets you get at your head. Bang it up. I want you to read that a little bit here and then we're going to get into a little bit of prayer because he's already ready here. How y'all doing, y'all? Y'all like me? Y'all know what I ain't coming back to death no more. No one they ain't got no they, ain't, they don't have a crowd. How do you know we don't have a crowd? This church is, could be full of angels. Amen. Unseen crowds. Not crowds that you can see. 
the humble. Those guys are what you what you cry to. Want to see the, the seeing crowd. But when you got the visible crowd with life, we see angels here going to God, manifest themselves. Read this. Read that. Luke 9, verse 23. Uh -huh. And he said to them all, uh -huh. if any man will come after me. If any person will come after me, want to follow me. Simple as that. Jesus Christ had a unique ministry. His ministry, and I'm trying to be just like him. Amen. His ministry was that he had a listening audience. That was the first time he got folks to listen to his message. The second phase, then he had a following ministry. Not only did they listen, but they followed him from town to town, village to village. They didn't just listen, but they followed him. That's a unique man. Because when you, a lot of folks can have a listening audience, and you come to church, you ain't got nobody there. <laughs> Empty house, like mine. But we're there. And then God has God have always read and laid this on my mind. We will get this region here. The region of Huntington is waiting. Nobody wants it. Nobody wants. So I went to God before I passed it. Lord, I want the region. You know what the region is? It's not just like Huntington. It can be Greenland. It can be Dix Hill. It can be all over this region. I said, God, I claim this region for your glory. Amen. Not for me to throw some pride on it, but for your glory. Three. Let him deny himself. Now we have some problems when we're following him. It's hard for us to fully to deny ourselves. And I'm not, let me just say this, and I'm going to get, get done as soon as I can. To deny yourself. How many of you, I'm proud of you, you know, you went home, you just come out of work, you're tired. You know, it was church. Oh, Lord, I'm tired of myself. I'm going to call the night off, y'all, go to church. That's the time you press your way. Sometimes the flesh has to be denied. That's why, I don't know, if I get sick, I'm going to get right behind that pulpit and get healed. Many times I stood around the, around the pulpit, sick as a dog, and immediately when I stopped preaching, God healed me. All kind of things. You would never know God until you get, amen, a uh, problems. And when God solves the problem, then you get to know God. Then God get to know you better too. It's when you're going through a trial, you're not willing, amen, to give up. Then God said, you know what? I seen you get victory over one endeavor. Now I have a little bit of confidence in you. I, I can trust you now. Notice what he said to Satan in the midst of man who was sick for, for 36, 38 years, shit, torn down. Said, I know him because you know what, I, I tried to get, get with him, but there's a hedge of protection. You know what the hedge was? Was the glory of God. When the glory of God is, is surrounded, no devil in hell can do you no harm. Amen. That wonderful, not a devil in hell I was telling folks that Apostle Skinner, Arturo Skinner, I can't see to save my life how anybody a praying church can have somebody come in and shoot and kill nine folks. It happened, didn't it? Well, what, okay, well, what was the problem? The glory of God wasn't there. Because if the glory of God is there, see, when the church don't pray, I mean, actually pray, I, 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 I don't mean saying words. Apostle Skinner had a gun shut, draw on him, they stopped the gun four times, four or five times, it didn't do anything. The glory of God, God was so powerful. Y'all ever had, it's anointing around you and you, you don't feel the devil? You don't say what the devil thinks if you don't even feel that. Yeah. And when, and, and if you're praying like the way, like the 
way God said. I just don't pray words. I pray until the Spirit of the Lord come upon me. And when the Spirit of the Lord is upon you, no devil in hell can kill you. <laughs> Y'all don't believe that, huh? How in the world if God said I'm with you even to the end of the world? Six trouble, God be with the seven trouble, I will not forsaken you. Lo, I'm with you always to will. End of the world. It's something about prayer. You pray through. You just don't mention a few words. I say how much you love God uh, uh, or what you want from God. You pray to glorify him and magnify him and glorify him until an anointing come upon you. When David had the anointing upon him, he slew Goliath. He did not fight that giant until, then, until Samuel anointed him to be the king. And when, and when he anointed him to be a king, then he defeated Goliath. It was not just David, it was the Spirit of God. It was the power of God. It's not by might, not by, but by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Amen. God wants us to get into the place, amen. We're not trying to physically try to defeat the, 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 to try to defeat the devil because you, you, you can't do it. Right. It, it. It is the Spirit of God that works who quick up here. Y'all remember Emma when I came down on this house? I think you was here. When we had this summit, yes. and, and, and I walked past it, the woman, the power of God was all over there. Don't touch me. Yes. I've been places where people tried, tried to come up to me and fall out before they ever got to me. That's what you call for, but the anointing of the Lord. Now, if you got that kind of anointing, you, you don't tell me God is going to allow the devil to come and shoot up everybody. Amen. Amen. That's not God. God doesn't operate like that. If my people that I'm going through, just repeat myself, if my people which are called by my name shall honor themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will they help us. We haven't heard from heaven in a long time. Amen. How many of y'all have prayed and looked like you couldn't get no prayer answered? Oh, Lord, I prayed on that. It don't look like God paid me no mind. Did a fast too and God, God didn't answer there's a lot of praying. It's when you get in a relationship with God, yes. commune with God, and God understands you. See, sometimes God just wait on you. What happened to Adam and Eve? And they fell down. God waited for them, and they hired them. <laughs> hired them. Naked. Hired them. God had to close them. Read a little, a little, a little bit more because I'm almost done, y'all. I'm almost done. And take up his cross daily and follow me. If any man, read that from the beginning and again. If, if any man will come after me. Come after you. To follow. You know, that, uh, that means to really to follow God. A lot of us is, is following flesh. I don't know nobody to follow me. I want you to follow Christ. I don't have a heaven or hell to put you in. That's why I tell you oftentimes, don't run to people for prayer all the time. What about your prayer life? Sharpen up your prayer life. You can defeat the devil. Your prayer ain't, my prayer ain't no greater than yours. Spend a little bit more all, all time with the I got the move on your behalf. Oh, glory to God. It, it, what do you say that again? If any man will come after me, uh -huh. let him deny himself. Deny himself. Don't give God your problems. You're coming after him. You can bring him, but don't let problems hold you back from following God. Deny yourself. And the hardest thing in the world is it, it, to give up something that you love. Such a television Football game, basketball game. I don't even watch it no more. I played it. It was a poor little man. Basketball, baseball, track and field, all that poor little man. I don't even watch it no more. I don't even want, 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 want to see television no more for any kind of sport. 
When you can deny yourself from that, God admires you. God looks on you and says, you're on your way to a blessing. On your way to a blessing. Those of you that are going through now, stay in the race. Do not let the devil take you from out of the race. That's the time you have to repeat the same thing over and over and over again. See, that's why it goes right in a cycle. Y'all have kids that go to school and, and they fail the grade. They have to go what? Summer school. They have to repeat it, right? Yep. So God, God is similar to that. He gave the devil a chance. Now he said he, he's not going to put no more on you than you're able to bear. Now if you're able to bear, then God expects for you. Because see, there is a conversation between God and what was the other name? Huh? Did you say conversation between God? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's a conversation with God. And he said, have you considered my, yeah, Joe, all right, see. And y'all can't get us, and so, oh, thank you, Holy Ghost, thank you, Holy Ghost. If, if, if I have to pin, if I have to pin on this group here, the silk will shake and sink. And the silk is going on down. He said, have you considered my son, sir, 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 Joe? Not like him. There's no man that I can find is even close to what Joe is. Have you considered? Yeah, man. I told y'all, that was the first time I see God made an agreement with the devil. Amen. If you move that hedge, and God said, yeah, all, all right, for your sake, I'm going to give you an opportunity because I have that much faith in Job. See, now, 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 now y'all thought y'all thought y'all, y'all had caught me, huh? <laughs> that God and the devil made, made an agreement? Yeah. Jesus and the devil made agreement. I said, well, when he cast out legion from that man, they asked Jesus, allow us to go into the swines. Jesus gave them permission to do it. Do y'all believe that? He could have destroyed them. But he, he allowed that to happen. Read. And take up his cross daily and follow me. You see, you see, you see, you got to lift up yourself. Don't expect for everybody to lift you up because you're too lazy. I can't wait until that morning program over on a Sunday morning just to come to this little, this little small church. I have over 500 folk, folks down in Virginia. My church is there. I passed the three churches. I had about five to six hundred folks. I gave up all that to come back here. It's not the crowd. It's what's in the crowd. Understand. It's what it, it's cool and can you hear from God in the midst of the crowd here? Can you see God in the midst of, of the crowd, of crowd that God has here? You can't say that everywhere. Praise the Lord. Read and I'm almost done. And I'm almost done. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. If you try to save your life, you're going to lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for uh-huh. my sake, yeah. the same you know shall what save it. Give up the lifestyle. Amen. Amen. Give up the parties and the clubs. Alcohol. Drugs. You name it. Give it up. Are you willing to do that? Now, if you're willing to do that for my sake, so you don't lost that lifestyle. Now God say, I, I can save you now. But I cannot save you with the mess you got. Now if I do save you, then I want you to return and go back to the same place you were before. And I know what we're trying to say. Yeah, God is willing, amen, to bring, bring us back. God is willing to forgive, but he don't want you to continue to do a lifestyle of sin. One thing that God rejected, God rejected, that sin is a stink in the nostrils of God. The eternal sin stinks. I don't care how much perfume you go I got on some nice cologne tonight. I'm asking, I'm told, and you smell good tonight. I said, red, red, yeah, smell all right. So you put on all your perfume and cologne, and you got sin, God, God said, despite of what you have covered that up with, 
It stinks. Y'all have heard that preach? Yeah, see, it stinks in the nostrils of God. Free in him. I'm going to bring this thing down. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, will lose save. his life, give it up like I've done for the for for my own sake. Man, I heard that first message. Lose lose everything but save your soul. I call him bold. And I can never ever forget that day when God came into my life and saved me. I didn't do the ordinary and everything. I, I never smoked a drink in my life. I, I really didn't even hurt, didn't even have a girlfriend. All that stuff I didn't do. But I was yet a sinner. Amen. My goodness was just like 50 rags. At the Bible said, all your goodness was just that, just like what? 50 rags. But it's when I got a hope to God and God filled that void that was empty. A lot of y'all are going through some things, a lot of hurt now. God can feel it. Amen. Some of you can't let go some things. It's going to take Jesus to break it. Praise the Lord. You can do all the fighting you want, but if the Holy Ghost and the anointing of God don't destroy it, the devil going to have a picnic Amen. in your life. Read. The same shall save it. The same shall save it once you give up. When I gave up about 56 years ago, uh -huh, I made mistakes. Just like anybody else. But I didn't go back. You cannot go forward by going backwards. You all ever seen a car? You try to go forward and you're going backwards. Otherwise, you're going back to the same mud hole you just came out of. You're going back to the uh, old pin that Jesus Christ brought you out. You want to go forward? Stand firm. Stand still. And see the salvation of the Lord. See God move you. See God, amen, take you past that what you struggle with. Amen. The drug addict that comes, struggling with drugs. They get into our class, amen, we have an opportunity to break it. Praise the Lord. You can be set free. You don't have to go through the medicine. You don't have to go through the, the, the programs and stuff because the program is not doing very good. Some folks go in, in and out program, in and out, in and out, because they want to, they don't want to give what they're doing up. It's when you make it up in your mind, Lord, I want to give it up. I'm going to tell you, God will help you. He will bear you up. Amen. Until you get to the place where you're sick and tired of it, you can kiss it goodbye. Amen. But if you don't get sick, sick and tired of it, and say, you know what, I'm through with it, and walk, walk away from it. If you turn from your wicked ways and seek the face of God, God said, now I will hear from you. The reason why God is not speaking to the church or speaking to you as an individual, that there, there is something between you and God, that God, God wants you to come up to the place where he, he can talk to you. You don't have to have a prophet for God to talk to you. Lord, I don't want to go and see what the prophet says. Well, well you're the pro pro prophet yourself. Let God see. The prophet can only do one thing, confirm what God has spoken Amen. to. Amen. That's all it is. Yeah. That's not the prophecy. That's all it is. Confirm what God has for you. The, oh, you're oh my God. Yeah, you told me that. Somebody else told me. You all remember? Somebody else told you something. Somebody else. Had, you got about four or five folks that were, what, said the same thing out of the mouth of two or three. The yeah. truth is what? Established. Established. Praise God, we will come to a close. Read, read all of them. For what is a man advantaged if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? It's time for us lose the world, lose the things of the world, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If you don't, then the love of the Father is not in you. Amen. You can sit up in church all you want, but if you're still going to your nightclub and Drinking your, your alcohol, still smoking away out green and Jimmy Crack, <laughs> still puffing on, on, on that and drinking the spirit of Memphis. You, you got out your head all bad. And, and you want to serve God uh, on a Sunday morning and you're going to raise hell all night. Saturday night. 
Oh man. If God see if God is like this here, he's jealous. God is jealous over you, and the devil is jealous over you too. Too play game. God is jealous of God. Why? Because he brought you out of the mire and washed you up and sanctified you. Say, the devil is jealous because God got you from him. <laughs> he don't want to lose you. Why? Because if anything he tells you to do, you figure enough up to do it, you'll do it. Huh? Y'all ever done some things that if you say you wouldn't ever do it? You wind up doing it, right? Just square your hand. I promise you, yeah, man, I'll never do that. So same little words will come back and haunt you. All right. Lose your life for the gospel's sake. All right. For whosoever shall be ashamed of me. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Some people get shamed, and they shame to testify. They shame to let the neighbors know that I'm born again now. I don't do that no more. I don't, I, I don't hang out with the crowd no more. That's a big deal. See, if God go on a Savior, can he trust you to stay out of the bar? Only time you come home is when you fall off the stool. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody has to carry you home. <laughs> All right, please. For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed. <laughs> It's not even worthy to even to make it in. I tell anybody right now, y'all can laugh at me if I love Jesus Christ. I'm gonna make it known. I'm not gonna be shy. <laughs> I'm gonna cry loud and say something. I'm gonna let the world know that I am born again. I'm saved and sanctified, and I'm on my way to heaven. And nothing will never stop me now. I'm on the right road. My endurance is going to bring me to what I've been crying for, asking God for. I'm not going to heaven broken and sick. I'm going to heaven well, well. With money, I'm going to, go, going to heaven. Because everything that is laid up for you, God has it on. God has it, your name on it. On the thing, thing that God wants want to do, but unjust, got to give it to who? To the righteous and to the just. So, how can God take from the unjust? Well, who is it going to give it to? To somebody that really needs it. Wouldn't that be nice if the, if God would just fill the bank account with so much money? Would that be nice? But what are you waiting on? <laughs> when, when are you going to let go of the world? You want, I mean, you want the big benefit, but you don't want to pay the price. It's a price to be paid. And when, and when, and when, and when the price is paid, I can't tell you, y'all will see God move. Y'all have seen so many miracles that take place in this place here. Amen. On our crusade, I'm going back to the crusade. I'm putting this thing on because you know what? I believe that God has uh, somebody, even if he's just saved one person. I'm not worried about the crowd. Amen. Hear about the crowd. Because that one person that God might save will be another uh, uh, Paul, Amen. another uh, uh, another James and Peter. Amen. Who knows? Amen. The one sin that repented, the angels in heaven, the, uh, the, you can stir up heaven, man. Yeah. They rejoice Amen. over you. Get a person to say, bring somebody in. We don't know. When I came into that church at Pastor Usher's church, I ain't had no mind to be saved. I didn't mind that call because I was invited. Harold Edwards, he invited me, he worried me, he to death come on to church. I said, man, I ain't, I ain't got nothing to come on to church, man. Because <laughs> I was dumb and stupid. When I walked in that church, it was only about, about, about five folks with Pastor Usher. And his family and a preacher invited. And he preached one message. They lose everything but save your soul. That thing with the working on me, I was headed straight to the bar. Never drank in my whole entire life. Don't know what a drunk is, a being drunk is. That's where the boys hung out on that. (laughs) 
I wasn't saved. See, you could see, you see, see, you could be a righteous sinner, a good sinner, and still go to hell for being good. <laughs> but when you get saved and sanctified, you, uh, you see God. You see God won't allow the punishment to punish you. God, give, God give you everything that He wants you to have. And in my closing, Amen. This is the season and time that God is getting ready to move on the church. Church people, we need to pull up. Church folk, give your all to him. Give your all to him. When I had open heart surgery and stayed out of church for, for, three, for three months, it was so miserable. I came in and, and I sat still for a whole year. I was supposed to be dead. And they had out all over Huntington. Oh, he's dead. And I come out. Twice they had out. And then I faced my table. How do I look for being a dead man? Amen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I. It didn't make me no different. I told my wife when when I prayed. It was not because I had anything wrong with my heart. It was it, it was a, 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 a two was detached from my arteries, so they had to slip me wide open and put it together. They didn't have to borrow from leg anything. They just put it together, and that's all it was. And they wasn't wasn't expecting me to live. They gave me a, a chance for. Stepping and I said, oh, we don't know if you're going to make it, don't look too good. Made it there. They give me three months to live. They want you to stay in bed for three months. You can't do nothing, just go to the bathroom and come back to bed. I passed that test. They were going to give you a year to live. Passed that, I said, now y'all now throw your records away because my record is up in heaven here now. And pick your record and burn them and throw them, throw them away. They told me, you need to write a book on this, man. Well done. Lift your hand. Praise God.